All right, by request, somebody requested I show them how I uh, mount my camera to the telescope. Well, this is a piece that comes with the uh, telescope. It's a uh, the two inch piece that adapts down to the inch and a quarter. Well, when you take this piece off, You have a thread right here. This is threaded with the M42 thread. I just bought a Canon adapter. It adapts to my camera. It's got the 40 M42 thread in it, and these pieces just screw together. It's that simple. This just goes into the camera, locks in, drops right in the telescope. That simple. That's one of the reasons I like this telescope so much. It came with everything I needed to put my camera on here except for the adapter for the camera. That's it. I already had this adapter, this M42, because I have some great old, old lenses that I uh, had with a Pentax camera. One of them is this one right here, 400 millimeter, with the Pentax threaded mount, and it threads right into the camera. And then you got a small telescope. And I'll put this on my Star Tracker Mini. And I can get long exposures with this, and it takes really great pictures at 400 millimeters. The uh, Skywatcher Mini does a lot longer exposures, but it doesn't have go to or nothing. You have to find your target. I still use it, and I like it a lot. Everything runs off of your cell phone, so. And has a built in envelometer. You don't need that. You just hook a cable in, so. But anyway, we're not talking about that. So uh, that's how I mount the camera to the telescope. It's pretty simple. That's that was the easiest part of this rig. And well, anyway, tonight it's going to get really super cold, and I'm going to try to get the flaming star nebula. And I'll uh, I'll set this up. Somebody asked me about the tracking, uh, setting it up for tracking and everything I'll do that and show you how I do that I use the two star method you can use the skyline or the two star or planetary I prefer the two star but you know you gotta know your stars or have an app on your phone where you can find the star name of the star I always use Polaris easiest one to find and it, I know where it's at so and I usually use Vega or something like that because it's super bright and then I use my focus mask on it because Vegas is so bright and it works better. So, anyway, I'm gonna set up tonight and see if we can't get a picture of the Flaming Star Nebula. See you in a little while. All right, I've set my time and date, and I have put it on two star line. And I am going to go to Polaris. Oops, too far. All right. Polaris, and I'm going to hit enter, and it says use the directional buttons to line it up, so I'll turn the finder scope on, 
Alright, I got my finder scope on. And I'll line it up in the finder scope first. Hold on, let me get it lined up. Alright. I've gone through the settings. Once I got it close to Polaris, I'm going to hit enter. And then it says use the directional to center it in your eyepiece. Well, I got it set up my camera here. As you can see, Polaris is kind of in there, so I'll move it over. Oh, wrong way. And you want to get it dead center. About like that. And then hit a line on the finder. Right here, a line. Then it'll ask you for your second star. And I see that Capella is up, so I'm going to use Capella. There it is. All right. I'm going to hit enter. See that, Capella? Hit enter. And then it'll tell me to go to it. So I'll slew over to where Capella's at. All right, I'm going to have to look through this viewfinder. All right, I got it in the viewfinder. So I'm going to hit enter. And then it's going to tell me to use the directional arrows to line it up. And I'm going to do the same thing. So I am. There we go. Alright, that's pretty dead gone close. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say that's good right there. Alright, I'm gonna hit a line. And it says the line success, turn star pointer off or whatever and uh, it's ready to go all right let me turn the turn it off now uh, the flaming nebula the flame nebula is a Caldwell object and it won't be on my list so what I'm going to have to do is go to list and it's got named stars named objects let's see mess errors double constellations let's see if I can do this my hands are cold already Caldwell, there it is. So I'll hit enter on Caldwell. Then it'll, it'll tell you to put the number in. And it's 31, so it'd be 0, 3, 1. And then hit enter. This is a very faint object. So I'm going to use ISO 6400. I'm going to go with ISO 6400. I'm going to go with 20 second exposures and I'm going to take a bunch of them. So as soon as it gets dark enough, I'm going to start imaging and uh, see how it turns out. This is a tough target because it's so dim. 
All right, got my imaging done of the Flaming Star Nebula, and it turned out all right. But like I said, it was a it's a hard one to get. It's really faint, and with the uh, high ISO, it uh, kind of grainy. Got some noise in it. But I, I was surprised that it got it. This telescope got it. That uh, as dim as it is. And I didn't have a whole lot of time on it, but uh, I just can't seem to get the, the integration time that I want on some of these images. I've redone some images. Uh, I did the Andromeda Galaxy, uh, Spiral Galaxy, uh, a couple others. I'll put them on the end of this video and show you the, the difference of taking time and getting plenty of integration time and plenty of frames, you know, light frames. Uh, we had a cold snap come through, everybody did I guess, and it, it got cold, man, it got super cold. It got in the single digits, and I got out and imaged with this in the teens, low teens, and uh, I was surprised it kept going. It, uh, I sure didn't think it would. The, the screen here on the controller hand controller got a little hard to see got a little hard to push the buttons it could have been because my hands were so cold and everything but it still kept tracking fine it tracked great it tra tracked real great uh here's what it looked like here's what it looked like when i brought it back in from energy That's crazy, ain't it? That thing was froze solid. Uh, but it still kept on going. Anyway, I'm sorry about the video on a, lining it up. It wasn't all that great because I haven't figured out how to get a light out there where I can do some good video. I'm not real good at taking video at night, but I'll get better at it. But Anyway, here's the final image. and uh, you got to love this telescope, man. It is a great telescope. And for it to operate under single digits, well, in the low teens, it was crazy. It did great. Love it. Love it. Love this telescope. All right. Till next time, I'm out.